In this series of lectures, we are going to talk about chemical reactions. We've discussed physical changes versus chemical changes. And a chemical change is when one substance is actually going to convert into another. This means that bonds will break and new bonds will actually form. Here's an example of methane, which is CH4, and oxygen combining to form um, carbon dioxide and water. This would be a chemical change because we need to break bonds to form new ones and we end up with entirely different chemicals at the end. If I wanted to represent this then as kind of a, a before and after, um, I could write a chemical equation. And a chemical equation is gonna use an arrow for this before and after, much like in a nuclear decay equation. So we'll have before and after the chemical change. So before our chemical change, we're combining methane, which is CH4, um, and we are combining oxygen, which is O2. And combining these two together with some time, we'll get um, carbon dioxide, CO2, and water. Now there's more information I can layer on top of this basic before and after chemical change. I can look at the number of particles that are going to react together. If I look at my oxygen, I have one, two, three, four when I start out. I have four oxygen um, and I have one, two methane molecules. So I can see the ratio that these are gonna combine in to form carbon dioxide and water. And when I look at my products, I can see that for water, I've got one, two, three, four water molecules that form and one, two carbon dioxide molecules that form. I can also see um, that these are all in the gas phase just by the fact that they're floating around, which is hard to do from these molecular view um, pictures. But I can always also put in their phases as well to give someone even more information about what's happening in this chemical reaction. So let's, let's take a deeper look at this um, about, so that way we can be clear about how to communicate what happens during a chemical equation or reaction in the form of an equation. So here's the kind of variable form of a chemical equation um, broken down into a few things. We'll always have our reactants or our starting materials on the left hand side of the equation which is our before side. And we'll have our products, um, what we create, on the right-hand side. And that's really our after. And we use this arrow to distinguish between the two. We'll always include the physical state of the reactant or product that forms. And we'll have an abbreviation for it. There'll always be parentheses around the state to distinguish it from the chemical formula. And if it's solid, we'll call it S. If it's liquid, we'll call it L. If it's gas, we'll call it G. And those are our three physical states we've learned about so far. We've got another one that we use, aqueous, A-Q. Aqueous just means dissolved in water. And we'll spend a lot of time talking about solutions later in the quarter. Um, but this basically means that you have your reactant or product combined with lots of water um, in a homogeneous mixture and we call it aqueous like aquaman or something like that so besides our states we're also going to have um, our coefficients i'm going to highlight these green they're the lowercase letters for the um referring to the the variable for the chemical. And these are really going to give us the ratio that our reactants combine to form our products. 
and this can be thought of as molecules or moles of molecules. And of course, we'll always include our actual chemical formula, formulas of what is combining. Rather than writing out names, we'll use chemical formulas. A few other things you'll see um, is the plus symbols here. These separate our different chemicals that are reacting or forming. And um, it's kind of like saying A adds to B and that add is the plus symbol rather than a comma or an and or anything like that. Um, and so we'll separate our different chemicals that are combining with a plus arrow. We will use our or sorry, a plus symbol. We'll use an arrow to distinguish between our reactants and our products. And sometimes we'll see on this arrow um, a little triangle above it. That means that heat is added as well. Um, so like they were heated over a stove or a flame. And this is summarizing that A versus, um, big A versus little A, or big B versus little B. So this idea that we have our, our chemical formulas. But also we have coefficients that are telling us how these things combine, what ratio they combine in. So when we were looking at this methane and oxygen example earlier, we counted up that there were two methane molecules and four oxygen molecules combining to form two carbon dioxide and four water molecules. And so that's really, these numbers right here are those coefficients. And we'll make sure that before we do um, anything with a chemical equation that it is a balanced chemical equation. And we can determine that information from counting up molecules in a picture like this, but usually we don't have this clear of an idea. Instead, we're going to balance it just based on the elements that we have and the number of atoms of each element that we have in our reactants and products. One of our, our kind of fundamental ideas in chemistry is that matter is conserved. So if I put a whole bunch of things into a flask, those things are the only elements and atoms I have to work with in that flask and they won't disappear and new ones won't appear. And so because the number of atoms for our elements are conserved within a reaction, whatever we have in our reactants, we'll have to have in our product. So looking at that, those coefficients a little bit more, the way reactions occur is our reactants, in this case, um, butane and oxygen, actually collide with one another. And when they run into each other, just like cars colliding, if they hit with enough energy, so for cars, enough speed, bonds will break and new ones will form. Or if Again, with a car analogy, you'll total your car and crumple it. And then we get new product, new chemicals out of that collision. And so um, because those atoms are conserved in these collisions, we can track the changes that occur um, by looking at the number of atoms of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen we have in our reactants. We know we have to have that same number in our product. And so we have two molecules of our butane, and that really means that we have two times four, which equals eight carbon atoms. And for our hydrogen, it means we have two times 10, 20 hydrogens. We have 13 oxygen molecules, so it's 13 times two or 26 oxygen atoms. These eight carbon atoms, 26 oxygen atoms, and 20 hydrogen atoms are gonna to combine to form eight molecules of carbon dioxide and 10 molecules of water. And you can double check these to make sure that we still have the same number of atoms. We have um, 10 
water molecules each with two hydrogen atoms, which is 20 hydrogen atoms. So that checks out perfectly with what we had in our reactants. And we also have eight carbon atoms, and that matches well with what we had from our butane. And we have eight times two, which is 16 oxygen atoms from our carbon dioxide. Um, plus our 10 from our water molecules for 26 oxygen atoms, which matches with the 26 oxygen atoms that we had from our reactants. And so just tracking the number of molecules is one way to do this, although as this reaction gets larger and we do it actually on a macroscopic scale, it'll be annoying to say how many molecules we actually have. Um, because there'll be so many of them. And so we use these numbers, at, these coefficient numbers, as a ratio of molecules, or as we'll see soon, moles of molecules.